The party political broadcast, an exciting creative medium. This week, Location Report visits the set of Batting for Britain. Yes, it's a smashing piece. We're all pretty excited about it. Uh, I play this working class person called Brian, who stopped in the street one day and uh, asked what he thinks of Margaret Thatcher and the Conservatives. <laughs> and to cut a long story short, uh, he says that he likes them. Uh, obviously, uh, he's uh, quite a brave man. He's also a very sensitive man. And we've tried to bring this out, uh, and uh, I think it works, in a very, very poignant smile at the end of the scene. For the actor, the demanding challenge of characterization has been met. But how is the artistic conception working as a whole? I play the punk. <laughs> it's all going very well. <laughs> Touch with. Uh, it's a great cast, great, great team, great script. It's, it's very exciting, because um, we're grappling with some complex, <laughs> resonant themes, like the nuclear debate. Jenny, love, we need more flies around the peace women. <laughs> I hope it'll be my best yet. And the ending, well, I'm quite pleased with that. This is Labour Alley. Let's take a walk down Labour Alley. But there is an alternative route. Let's try Conservative Way. <laughs> The Conservatives, aiming for a better Britain. Welcome to Who Dares Wins, but first, I'm afraid there's been more trouble in Northern Ireland. Apparently, two masked intruders have just broken into a house in Belfast and soundproofed Ian Paisley. <laughs> but tonight is our special nostalgia edition of Who Dares Wins, and later on in the programme, we'll be proving that Winston Churchill actually wrote his History of the Second World War in 1939, <laughs> and then bribed Hitler to invade Poland just to boost sales. <laughs> And we'll also be taking another look at Dunkirk. Was it really such a defeat? Or was it in fact a, a victory? And the chemist just printed the photos the wrong way round. <laughs> and we'll be talking about the big 50s revival that's on its way. Brill cream is coming back, teddy boy fashions are going to be all the rage, and Mrs Thatcher is going to invade Suez. <laughs> and we'll be taking a trip down memory lane and recalling some of those fantastic, those marvellous, those Enchanting. Would you do piss off? <laughs> <laughs> Lo, 
Bloody hell. <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be recalling some of those fantastic, those marvellous, enchanting songs of John Lennon and Paul McCartney. And we'll be asking the key question, which one of them did marry the more appalling woman? <laughs> And now I'd like to do my Frank Sinatra impersonation. Yes, we know you would, Phil. Uh, <laughs> Julia. But just why do people live in the past? Well, of course, the Vikings had no choice. But <laughs> <laughs> with me right now is a man so nostalgic for a bygone age that he has opened a restaurant set in the past. Ralph, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Now, Ralph, tell us, tell us a little bit about the restaurant. Well, Julia, I've always been terribly interested in Dickensian London. So when I was made redundant, I thought um, it was the I'm most... Sorry, sorry. sorry to interrupt, but um, did you say Dickensian London? Yes, that's right, you see. So um, when I... Um... Charles, Charles Dickens, the Victorian novelist. Yes, 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 that's right, yes. Um, so... Ralph, um, so why, why then are you dressed as an Elizabethan? Uh, well, it's my night off. <laughs> um... Phil. Well, I'm terribly excited, actually, because with me right now is the winner of this year's Elvis Presley Lookalike Contest. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Simon. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to you. Come in. Simon Evans. <laughs> yes. 14 Hereford Drive. Yes. I am deaf. <laughs> Would you just come along with me, please? Sorry? On the Grim Reaper. Your time is up. Oh, well, would you like to come inside and have a glass of wine while I get ready? Why not? <laughs> Just a quick one, then. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid you've uh, caught me a bit unprepared, really. Isn't that always the way? You know, I've told them before, I said, give me more backup and I'll give the people more time, but no. Just sign here, please, will you? Lovely place you've got here. Yeah, I've just finished paying the mortgage off. <laughs> <laughs> Tough luck. Somebody's birthday, is it? Yes, it's, it's, it's mine. Oh, lovely. Many happy returns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll bet you weren't expecting a reaper gram, were you? <laughs> no. That's a lovely bar, isn't it? It's beautiful. So, Wedgwood. Is it? Blimey. Still, you can't take it with you. <clears throat> oh, go on then. <laughs> but don't tell him I told you so, all right? It's a birthday treat. Right, let's get cracking. Well, I... Uh, just a minute, I... I've got tickets for Torval and Dean tonight. <laughs> you know, you see, every cloud has a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends are coming round in a minute for a drink. Look, Simon, if it was up to me, fair enough. But, I mean, it's more than my job's worth. You see, they haven't forgiven me for letting Teddy Kennedy talk me out of it that time. <laughs> now, let's, let's, let's get a move on. I'm due at an experimental traffic junction in 25 minutes. <laughs> Can I just ring my mum and, and, and say goodbye? She'll... It shouldn't have to be upset. It's not worth it. Look, she's booked in for next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, Mr. Mr. Evans, I'm not really deaf, come to snatch you away. All I could have been. Which is why I think you should invest in one of our insurance policies. <laughs> the thing is, the way I'm going to quietly outline it to you is that we can actually get it. With me now is Mrs. Gloria Walcott. Hello, watcher! <laughs> <laughs> Now, Gloria, <laughs> Gloria has a rather famous father. Yes, I have that, me old China, and why not? <laughs> yes, she's in fact the youngest daughter of the former Fleet Street editor, Derek Jameson. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, many people say I resemble my old dad, but I don't see it, really. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> Did you ever think of following in your father's footsteps to Fleet Street? No, 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 no. I was originally a trainee newsreader for ITN, but they got rid of me on account of the way I spoke. <laughs> yes, it's a rather rich accent. No, 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 it wasn't the accent, Governor. No, it was the way I kept spraying the camera. <laughs> I see. Uh, I got a push after the Sasatwan sword swallower scandal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, 
I broke the windscreen wiper on the camera lens and I drowned a sound man. <laughs> and why not, mate? Uh... Uh, Victoria, um, what does the future hold? Oh, I've got a marvellous new job, marvellous. What's that? I'm a speech therapist for Janet Street Porter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Gloria Walcott. And uh, next week we'll have Cecil Parkinson in the studio. We won't be talking to him, just sniggering and pointing a lot. <laughs> Professor Geoffrey Simmons. That's right. Oh, oh, I've seen all your pictures in the papers. The world's leading astrophysicist, isn't it? I have a very fine team, you know. Oh, come on. They don't give the Nobel Prize to anybody, do they? That's very kind of you. Yeah. yeah. Could I have some of your sperm, please? <laughs> No. Go on. <laughs> Just a little cupful. Go, <laughs> go away. A half a cup then. Go on. Go on. Look. I brought some magazines to help you along. <laughs> I mean, and we pay you, well, you know, cash on delivery. You can't have any. Leave me alone. Man of your age can't feel guilty about masturbation, surely. <laughs> no, I just don't do requests, that's all. <laughs> now, please, leave me alone before I'm forced to summon the appropriate authorities. Miss Phillips. What? Well, why not? I do not wish to become involved in sperm donation. Now, will you please, Bot, leave me alone? Oh, go on, please. You were my first choice. I could have had Jonathan Miller for ten pounds less. I'm going to count up to ten, and then I'm going to call the police. Oh, One. On. Please. Two. You're a genius. Three. I want four, your baby! Five. Six. Well, listen, I've got a bit of Daily seven, Thompson's already. I thought if I mixed them up, it would be... Eight. Look, I'll, tell you, look, I'll tell you what, we'll compromise, all right? You don't have to do anything now, right? But next time you're changing the beds, give us a ring and we'll come out and get the dirty sheets. All right? Nine, ten... Quick, hand those trousers, go on! Ah! <laughs> With us this week, we have a very special guest, writer, comedian, notorious satirist. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Peter Cook? Peter, very good to have you on the show and looking as young as ever. Oh, thank you. You uh, can't beat wealth. <laughs> now, Peter, with um, TW3 and Beyond the Fringe and setting up Private Eye, you are sort of a founder member of the 60s satire boom, which made comedy the bane of the establishment. Yes, well, I was always very interested in the um, political cabaret in Germany in the 30s, which did so much to prevent the rise of Hitler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought, why not try it over here? Right. <laughs> but uh, though you're very well known as a satirist, you actually started in entertainment in a very different role. True, I was the uh, fourth Beverly sister. <laughs> <laughs> very much the black sheep of the Beverly sisters. Well, interesting enough, the, the, the black sheep of the Beverly sisters was a merino ram <laughs> called Coalface. Babs used to keep her in the back of the garden. <laughs> Fascinating story. In fact, I've, I've written a book about it called... Um, Coalface, the black sheep of the Beverly, <laughs> which is now available in paperback. Thank you very much. Peter, Interesting tale. Peter, you're doing it, aren't you? I did say don't come on here just to plug your bloody books. I'm just fed up with celebrities coming to other people's shows to plug their books. No, I'm sorry about that. They do tend to go on ad nauseam, which is why I've written an expose <laughs> of this kind of thing. Peter Cook's 100 Most Blatant Plugs. <laughs> you're doing it again. Yes, thank you, Rory. Thank you very much indeed. You're doing it again is the title of my new autobiography out in hardback and softback listen, and everything else. This, this is flagrant opportunism. I mean, I don't come on here and plug my novel about uh, romance and intrigue and sex among Los Angeles' most powerful women, do I? You've written one, have you? Yes, it's called... Uh, <laughs> it's called Hollywood Clap Clinic. <laughs> I'm actually quite pleased with that one. I've also written a romance which is set in the changing rooms on an Indian cricket ground, and that's called the Fart Pavilion. <laughs> and, 
another one which I <laughs> earlier wrote is a study of the hygiene and cleanliness of famous naturalists, and it's called Life on David Attenborough. <laughs> and it's a subtitled uh, The Mysterious Smell of Arthur C. Clarke. Well, I, I think biography is a fascinating yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, um, yeah. I've, uh, I've written one called Hot Air Balloon from the North. Traces the rise of Colin Welland. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it's the it's a sort of um, the darker side of yeah. Colin Welland, the, the back side of Colin Welland. <laughs> well, uh, uh, record two, unnatural gas. Uh, it's all very good. <laughs> well, one of the biographies I worked on uh, in my early career as a novelist was this one. It's called in Inside Shirley Conran. Oh, that's uh, uh, Conran the Barbarian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, my two investigative blockbusters. Did Jackie Kennedy murder the president for the insurance money? <laughs> and Hitler is alive and well and living in Brentford. Talking of Brentford, there's a travel <laughs> guide. Whoa, 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 hang on. Yeah, sorry. Just stop all this gratuitous book plucking. I mean, it's quite obvious. The audience is completely bored by it. Love it. You know, <laughs> they're not. I mean, unless anybody here has got a book, they want to plug as well. I <laughs> We interrupt this sketch to point out that flagrant advertising within actual programme time is contrary to IBA ruling. The IBA regulations governing on-screen advertising are now available in a glossy bump of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> the IBA rules OK. Only $2.95. to hear it. Can you sing it for me? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Hollywood lady, my Hollywood lady, Hollywood lady, I think as I pass of your eyes green and shady, of your hair long and black, how I love you. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> but you were thinking of getting it dyed, weren't you? I was thinking of getting it dyed blonde, not black. You know, I think that black would really suit you. <sighs> yeah. It would really go with my green and shady eyes, do you think? Yeah, exactly. Which are blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sort of greenish blue. Blue. Yeah, it, look, it's only a working lyric, a first draft. Yeah, Fiona's I mean. eyes are green and shady, aren't they? Who? And Fiona's hair is long and black. Fiona? And Fiona lives in Hollywood. Oh, that Fiona? Yeah, well, I live in Chorleywood. Oh, okay. <laughs> Doesn't have the same so ring. Why isn't it Chorleywood Lady? Okay. Chorley or Wood Lady? It is. Yeah, go on, go on, go on. Hollywood lady, I think as I drink bourbon of your eyes blue and shady, of your hair longish and sort of auburn, sweet heart, Hollywood lady of mine. Uh, all right. <laughs> Just as good, isn't it? It'll be a number one. Mm -hmm. It'll be our number one. What's it called? Sleeping with Fiona. <laughs> now, this guy was very, very silly. He got caught out. Now, adultery is a very serious business, and if you're considering it, and I know an awful lot of people are, then you should have a few excuses up your sleeve in case you're caught in flagrante delicto, which is Latin for on the job with a bit of strange. <laughs> Here are some examples. For God's sake, help me hold her down. She's having a fit. <laughs> Number two. Oh, um, it's just a door-to-door -door condom salesman giving me a free demonstration. <laughs> Number three. Oh, just trying out my new novelty willy warmer. <laughs> Later on, we'll be playing just a minute and asking Geoffrey Archer to try and speak for 60 seconds without once making a complete arsehole of himself. 
But first of all, it's Saturday night. And until this winter, that meant match of the day. But tonight, on Who Dares Wins, we're going to flout the ban on televised soccer and bring you, for the first time this season, live football action! <laughs> Two teams are running out onto the pitch, both at full strength there. Phil and Tony in the distinctive, the distinctive colours of Tony and Phil. And Rory and Jimmy back in the Rory and Jimmy team after a six-week layoff. <laughs> and now both teams line up for the national anthem. <laughs> right, okay, that's enough of that. Right, let's have a bit of singing and chanting there, not with the atmosphere. Jimmy Hill, that's great, that's great. Now then, who's going to be Jimmy Hill? You, could you be Jimmy Hill, please, if you'd like to just put this, uh, this chin on. That's great. And um, we'll, we need a referee. Now, is there by any chance a referee in the audience? <laughs> Jimmy, right, and uh, are we ready, ready lads there? Right, time for the kickoff. <coughs> and it's already Jimmy, and, oh, oh, it's, oh, and it's a foul, it's a foul oh, from Bill Rambo Pope. Oh, <laughs> how do you see that, Jimmy? <laughs> Lost for words, well, it wasn't really unbelievable, was it? Jimmy's always so good at summing up the situation. And what's happening, what's happening? No, Phil Pope is off, he is off, and he is break for more expert comment from Jimmy Hill, some mindless comment from David Coleman, and a trick with a loaf and five fishes from Brian Clough. <laughs> We've just heard we've been banned from European television now. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Latest football news is that talks to restructure the Football League have broken down because nobody wants to be in the same division as Arsenal. Okay, Miss Not Important. <laughs> Take the weight off your makeup. <laughs> Mr. Marlowe, it's my father. He's a heavy gambler. That's good. Does he win? No. That's bad. <laughs> He's in big trouble. Shall I come to me? Because I've heard you're the best dick in town. <laughs> That's true. I'm a very good dick. <laughs> but I'm a private dick. <laughs> Look, is it the word dick that's bothering you lot out there? <laughs> Have we got the audience for Are You Being Served by mistake or something? <laughs> if you must know, the word dick <laughs> is a common word used in Raymond Chandler novels for detective. All right? <clears throat> Bloody Philistines. <laughs> I blame the comprehensive system for this lot, you know. <laughs> Okay, miss, so why come to me? I'm not cheap. In fact, as dicks come. <laughs> I'm pretty pricey. Because I've never had to. <laughs> yes. 
pay for a dick before <laughs> you Thank you, Julia. You got our friends from Mensa going again. Just grow up, you lot, will you? Good God! You're the kind of people who snigger when they walk past fire extinguishers which say, press knob firmly, aren't you? <laughs> if you must know, this is a witty and subtle literary parody. Might as well come out here and wiggle me private at the camera saying, underpants, underpants! <laughs> Get a grip! <laughs> Get a grip, Julia! <laughs> right! <laughs> Giggles over? Okay, miss, I should take some details. What's your father's name? Sydney Asshole. <laughs> 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 With me now is Detective Inspector Brian Anstey. Good evening. And tonight we'll be asking the key question, how predictable and accurate is the police breath test? Well, in order to do this, we required a guinea pig to consume a bottle of scotch. But unfortunately, the RSPCA objected, <laughs> so I did it instead. <laughs> Just before the show. Now, how sure can you be that I am or not over the limit? Well, Rory, with our new highly sophisticated test, pretty certain. Now, how do you feel now, by the way? I'm not drunk. Yeah, I know. No, I I'm think... not drunk. I'm perfectly sober. Yeah, I, I was... Well, I'm afraid you've already failed the first test, you see. <laughs> What's that? The only drunk sheep saying I'm not drunk test. <laughs> um, could I be convicted on that? No, not on that alone. We would require a second test, uh, such as this one. I'm just a bird in the sky. Ah! Ooh, ooh. Ooh, that's a load of blanket. I'm just a bird Yes, I'm afraid that test is also positive. What's that? Well, you couldn't resist joining in with the appallingly catchy holiday hit. <laughs> Next test, uh, blow into that, would you? Right. <laughs> well, you're obviously pissed. You're right, sir. <laughs> test number four, is your girlfriend here? No. Can't try that test, then. <laughs> no, actually, she left me. I mean, I still love her, but it's just that people, are, people aren't the way they are. They're the way they should be. And you've also failed the sentimental old bore test. <laughs> See, the thing is, my friend, the thing is... Julia? Julia, could you... Could you... Uh, Chief Inspector. So we were talking about drink, um... <laughs> I suppose drugs must pose an even greater problem. Indeed, Julia, and that's why we've introduced a new, highly efficient method of drug detection. Oh. Hendrix! <laughs> this is Hendrix. Yes, now, Hendrix is a sniffer hippie. <laughs> Allow us to illustrate. Uh, go, boy. Go, boy. Go, boy. Go, go boy. Where's the stash, man? <laughs> now, when it comes to drug detection, Hendrix is quite infallible. The only problem is he keeps getting stuck up Keith Richards' nose. <laughs> oh, well, boys. He's got one. He's got one. He's got one. sniffer hippies do you have? Well, sadly, Julia, not enough. Uh, in fact, if you're an old hippie who's had mold, more cold turkey than hot dinners, then we may need you. So write to us at this address. Stacy Keach House, <laughs> Box 274, Clapton 2J, LSD. Dempster. Dempster is our word of the week this week. A Dempster is a small, oily growth which clings to the buttocks of the famous. <laughs> What's Peter? He's the 14 seconds behind. Hey, come on, come on. Okay, let's go. Where's the wheel? The fourth wheel! Dear, oh dear. <laughs> 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 
What are you doing? Right dog you got there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it's a chicken. Say something bloody weird! Who is he? Where's Carlo? It's Piggy! I don't know! One of you! Change of the way! It's not the label, that's a problem, mate. It's the parts, see? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you want to be part to get fired? Well, they do these, don't they? Oh, no. <laughs> They're all laughing at me now! Change of the bloody way! All right, all right. No problem. Yeah, be ready Tuesday. <laughs> Well, now on Who Dares Wins, the very important subject... Oh, excuse me, I've just been handed some late news. Following President Reagan's offer of a massive cultural exchange, the Soviets have said they will interpret any episodes of the Dukes of Hazard as an act of war. <laughs> <laughs> but now, stress, and from time to time we all find ourselves in very stressful situations, don't we, sir? Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> now, for example... Here tonight, facing all these millions of people, might be stressful. Like you're showing the classic signs, you've gone red. <laughs> there's, a, there's a strange smell around here as well. And <laughs> but you see, there are various techniques we can use to, to get rid, to relieve this stress. And one of them is meditation. Now, if you just allow me to illustrate with you. Yeah. Just close your eyes, all right? Yeah. And relax. Just relax. Just let, let your mind go completely blank. <laughs> This might take a long time. <laughs> if, you, if you're having trouble, just imagine you're Noel Edmonds or something. Right? <laughs> now, just hum this note with me. <laughs> Near enough. <laughs> Brilliant. Well done. So, uh... I said to this geezer, you are out of order. So he's... Excuse me, it's a bit cloudy. Well, what do you expect for the middle of October? <laughs> you are out of order. That's no way to treat a customer. What's wrong? You served her straight away. I'll show you. Yes, sir. I like, uh, I like a pint of bitter, please, and a Bacardi and Coke. A pint of bitter and a Bacardi and Coke. Yes, sir, I've had a terrible day. I had to sort of reconstruct the whole computer system. So I've got rid of all the the apricots and apples, and I've got myself a couple of new acorns and a rather large wang. War cry! War cry! Would you like a war cry, sir? Um, all right. <laughs> war cry! War cry! Call this an end, Cart! It's more like a bloody funeral! Listen, you might as well end up under the table tonight as you'll be flattening your back tomorrow, eh? <laughs> What do you all want to drink? I was hoping we could just have a, a quiet girls' night out. All right. Hey! Anybody want to screw the bride? <laughs> you are out of order. <laughs> and you, watch my pint while I go for a slash. When I come back, if there's even half an inch gone, I'll have your bollocks for yo-yo. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, love, yeah, yeah, well, I'm stuck at the office, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I don't think so. I've got a meeting with a very, very important Scotch client. Important Scotch client. Uh, oh, hi, who's the new? Uh, you take the high road, can be three, Queen of the South, four. He's pissed, love, he's pissed. You know, they like these Scots. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, it, it, it wasn't. I, 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 Is chair free? Yeah. Now, I forgot. Was it a vodka and two whiskies at once? Four lemonades. Can't we go home now? Why? This is a party. We've been here three days. No, we <laughs> Come on, what do you want to drink, really? I want a stomach pump. Oh, goodness. Four double whiskies it is. All right. Ooh, oh. Nice bomb. Shame about the face. <laughs> what are you doing on your own, darling? Apparently I'm out of order. Four treble whiskies, please. Four Peter. treble whiskies, come Peter. on. Peter. 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 Pe
Ah, but he won't even reel aisle. Christ almighty. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> Well, I don't think I'll be home till an awful lot later. No, I've been uh, I've been kidnapped. Yeah. yeah. Oi, come over here. Yeah, these Lebanese uh, guerrillas, you know. Uh, we, the Black uh, Tuesday Movement, have kidnapped your husband as a protest against Western Zionist imperialism, so he won't be home till at least midnight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I know he did love, but he's from the Black Tuesday Sydney branch. <laughs> for the Lebanese black war cry and 45 for the Afghan. Oh, Sally Army's selling dope now. Have you seen the price of tambourines? <laughs> Who wasn't one of the pork scratchings? <laughs> pork scratchings? Who wasn't one of the pork scratchings, mate? Pork scratchings. Um, could, uh, could, uh, could, could I have a pie, please? All right, here you go. Okay, mate. Uh, on second thoughts, I'm... Uh, oh, hey, excuse me, excuse me. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, we've just finished our play upstairs, Thatcher Agonistes. I'm Inflation. And we just wondered whether anyone would like to discuss with us any of the relevant issues the production raises. Oh, yeah. <laughs>